Now, from Rush TV, your local news source. This is All Indiana Politics. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of All Indiana Politics. We begin this week with the Supreme Court's decision to allow Texas's new abortion law to take effect. It's the nation's most restrictive abortion law, banning nearly all abortions after six weeks into pregnancy. It also puts enforcement in the hands of private citizens and not government officials. The late night decision from what's referred to as the court's shadow docket has set off a renewed firestorm over the future of Roe v. Roe v. Wade. Rather. It also has state lawmakers around the country, including Indiana, considering passing laws similar to the one in Texas. I want to talk with State Senator Liz Brown this morning on a week which has uh, clearly um, brought a lot of news in the issue of abortion. Texas ruling from the Supreme Court. This is an issue you've been deeply vested in. What's your initial reaction to it? Um, I thought, obviously, I agree with the Supreme Court. I thought it was a great ruling, and I think it's a very unique law, the way Texas styled it, and that's why I'm seriously looking into it. What, what's your timeline if you sponsor something? We do have a special session coming up. Would you try to put it in that? No, no. The special session is just for redistricting. That's very unique. That's not something we've done since I've been at the state house. And so I'll be working on drafting this legislation, and we don't start actually filing them till late November, December, and then the session will start in January. Do, do you have a sense of whether you would have a lot of support for that? Absolutely. Uh, we have a very strong pro-life caucus in both the Senate and the House, and so I don't anticipate that there would be any problem, depending on how, how we can get it drafted, that there will be any problem passing it. Uh, Not sure it will look exactly like the Texas bill. Haven't really seen all the details of that yet. You say it will look exactly like it. I no, I said I don't know if it will look exactly don't like it. don't know Texas if it will. Bill. Yes. Uh, it, you know, you know the law quite well as a lawmaker and, of course, uh, as an attorney. I, I would like your perspective on both. As for that ruling, would there be, would you be interested in seeing something more final from the court before you put an Indiana version forward? Because at least as I read uh, what the justices wrote, this doesn't seem to be an absolute final stamp. This is our decision. It was more on on the procedure of right. where it stands. Right. No, I mean, we've passed pro-life legislation in the past with respect to banning fetal tissue research and uh, uh, dignified remains and making sure parents have notification, et cetera. We don't necessarily wait for the Supreme Court to weigh in. There is another case, as you know, the Dobbs case from out of Mississippi that's working its way through the court, which will be heard this upcoming session too. So, but I think ultimately this is a state's rights issue. And I think that's why we need to look at how we can best serve the Hoosiers in terms of pro-life legislation. Um, in, in that ruling, uh, justices also said, this is not about the constitutionality of the law in Texas, though you know well, when this issue comes up, the question becomes, is this a step toward overturning Roe versus Wade? Your thoughts? Yes, and I think it's really important to remember that the science hasn't kept up. Roe v. Wade talked about viability in the third trimester. We know that's not the case anymore. But more importantly, Roe v. Wade took away states' rights, and I think ultimately the best decision would be to let the states make these kinds of decisions. Uh, you mentioned redistricting being the focus and sole focus in your view yes. of the session coming up. Um, from what we know about that process, and even as you and I have this conversation, we're waiting to see maps and things like that. Are you pleased with the way it has gone so far? Well, I've not been here before uh, through the last redistricting process, but um, they've had meetings around the state. It's a very public process. They're asking for input on the website. So, so far, I haven't actually seen the maps, so I'm looking forward to going down a session in a few weeks and voting. State Senator Liz Brown, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Indiana Attorney General Todd Rokita celebrating the decision. He tweeted Thursday morning that the Supreme Court ruled for life and that the fight is just beginning. But this is a huge win for Texas and an even bigger win for the pro-life movement. His words. We also have reaction from Planned Parenthood advocates of Indiana. The group says the impact of this heinous abortion ban in Texas cannot be understated. They say the law overwhelmingly harms black and Latinx people plus those with low incomes and in rural areas who already face barriers to access. The statement goes on to say that they are deeply concerned that, that Indiana lawmakers will try to pass similar legislation, calling Indiana one of the most restrictive states on abortion, second only to Louisiana.
I'm going to bring in now uh, State Senator Shelley Yoder, Democrat, uh, who is um, clearly going to be part of the conversation here very soon with a special session. And of course, as the uh, full session starts next year, thank you for being with us. Want to jump in with the uh, decision on abortion laws in Texas from the Supreme Court. You've had some time to process that now. What's your first impression of that? I'm still processing it because this is a setback for every state uh, in the in the union. And as I'm processing this, I'm thinking about SB8 in Texas and how in Indiana we're going to see legislation like this. I believe it probably has already been filed as I've heard. But what's so dangerous about this is it sets a precedent that no longer is the state the enforcer of the law, but now we've deputized citizens. And the incredibly dangerous when it comes to constitutional rights for Hoosiers. You mentioned the civilian aspect of this, essentially setting it up so that people can sue to try to stop this, uh, as opposed to making it strictly a legislative matter. Are you surprised at the ruling? Because there were many analysts who said it, 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 it will clearly be blocked because of that civilian part of the law. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. It, it was just silence uh, on the part, just not acting on the part of the Supreme Court. And when you consider that one in four young people in Indiana, girls, report being sexually assaulted, if SB 8 is enacted in Indiana, what will happen is those rapists and assaulters will have more rights than those girls and those girls' families and, and, and parents. We claim to be a parental rights state, but this piece of legislation actually removes those rights and places more rights in the hands of the assaulter and the rapists. Do you get a sense of the timeline, how soon we might see this? Could this come up in the special session? It absolutely better not come up in this special session. Uh, we have been promised that only redistricting will be on our agenda and we, as Hoosiers, we better hold uh, the supermajority accountable to that promise. When you are in the clear minority, both chambers are, if you are a Democrat, how do you approach an issue like this, knowing that in terms of, of the count, the odds, if you will, uh, things are clearly stacked against you? Well, clearly, we've seen gerrymandering in Indiana. We know that it doesn't fall out that when the entire state of Indiana votes, we know that we fall around close to uh, 45, 46 percent Democrats. But that is not how it's reflected in the state legislature. So we do have a supermajority as a result of, of, of gerrymandering. And we absolutely need to have that addressed in this redistricting conversation. But what it feels like is Hoosiers are being held hostage here because they don't have a vote. We know that Hoosiers, we're common sense. We certainly want parental rights uh, over our children, and we want women to be able to access reproductive health care. When you look at the redistricting issue, and if it does stay clearly on that point this special session, uh, has the process been fair so far? Are there areas where you know already you would object? I know that Hoosiers are crying out that they don't feel like they are being heard. I know that the elections committee, they've made their rounds throughout Indiana. I attended those meetings and it was an outcry of people showing up for their me those meetings saying, we want an independent commission drawing these lines. And the supermajority said no. And so we need to make sure that we're holding state legislators accountable and making sure that those lines are drawn in such a way that people get to vote for their legislators and not the other way around, where the legislators are deciding, who do I want to have in my district? These, these districts are being drawn to favor the incumbent, and it's ultimately undermining democracy and what we're seeing is it's undermining the Constitution and the rights of Hoosiers. State Senator Shelley Yoder, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Coming up, Indiana prepares to welcome thousands of refugees fleeing from Afghanistan. We take you inside the plan for Camp Atterbury next. And 
welcome back to All Indiana Politics. Hundreds of refugees from Afghanistan now in Indiana. The first group arrived Thursday night, five days earlier than expected. Camp Atterbury uh, could house as many as 5,000 people who fled when U.S. troops withdrew from Afghanistan. I just think about the last 10 years, 20 years, folks who are um, either trying to get on a plane to freedom or um, going overland under the cover of night, just hoping they won't get stopped and executed like their family members and neighbors have been. Um, we need to be there for folks who are there for us, period. And we got to do it smartly and we got to be safe about it. Indiana National Guard Adjutant General Dale Lyle said today people are at points in Europe and the Middle East that are being vetted through multi layers and multi agencies. The process includes the Departments of State and Homeland Security, the FBI, and the National Counterterrorism Commission and others. Once cleared of flying to the U.S., they will go through several deep vetting processes, including upon arrival at Camp Atterbury. And so as far as uh, the evacuees presenting a risk to the surrounding community, uh, that risk has been all but eliminated by the vetting process. And I just restate that we know who's coming to Camp Atterbury and the vetting process is being, that is being done has all but reduced the risk uh, of, of things that might happen uh, by the evacuees. Evacuees will be screened and in a 14 day medical hold status. Evacuees will get COVID tested and get treatment if needed. COVID vaccines will be offered. Governor Eric Holcomb and the Indiana National Guard Adjutant General said today that first 1,000 Afghan evacuees will arrive here in central Indiana as soon as later this week, into this weekend, and into next week, and they're ready. As far as the lodging goes, so once they hit Camp Atterbury and they go through the process, that will determine where they go for lodging. So if you have a family, uh, we have the ability to house families in some of our dorms because they are I would say the barracks of today are a lot different than the barracks that I participated in when I came into the Army. And they have air conditioning, they have heating, they have toilet, uh, uh, plumbing, and all those things with that particular room. Depending on visa status, evacuees will be able to leave Camp Atterbury. Depending on what their status is will determine on how the, the non-governmental organization comes in and takes them and actually helps them get resettled uh, in the country. If you want to help, you can email or call Team Rubicon to find out their most up to date drop off locations. We also have a link to donate money on our website. Just head to the As Seen on Wish TV section and find this story. All right, coming up, President Biden defends his plan to end the war in Afghanistan, but did, it, did, did the chaos hurt him politically? We discuss that next on All Indiana Politics. And welcome back to All Indiana Politics as we welcome back Republican Whitley Yates and Democrat Brian Gaddy. Good to see you both. Happy Labor Day weekend. We want to start with the Supreme Court ruling on the Texas abortion law. Whitley, you first on this one. Is this a win for Republicans? I think this is a win for the pro-life movement and a win for humanity. Anytime that we're protecting the innocent lives of unborn children, both in utero and once they are here is important. I think that Texas took a very strong stance and I think that we are really excited to see things like this happen so that we can consistently be protecting the lives of the innocent and the unborn. Brian, your thoughts? Well, as Democrats, we trust women. We know this is a vexing issue. It's, it's a controversial issue. Uh, it's an issue that I'm familiar with as a Catholic, um, going to Catholic schools, and my church is adamantly against abortions. So all my life I've heard about this issue and I, and I know about it, but we have to be aware of how vexing is it of an issue is it for women and respect the decisions they make. This decision should be left up to women, their doctors and God, or if they believe in a spiritual being, and it should not be handled by state legislators and politicians. And the Republicans claim to be the small government party, but they always find a way to 
um, interject themselves in this issue in a very big government way. Talk about big government. They're actually trying to decide for women what they should do with their bodies. That is the essence of big government. So it just shows the hypocrisy of Republicans. Whitley, I'll let you react, and then I want to move on here to another part of this of this topic. The pro-life versus pro-abortion slash pro-death, they're never going to really see eye to eye because there's a fundamental issue in their ideologies of what murder is versus what saving a life is. And the truth of the matter is, I cannot believe that Brian, as a Catholic, is saying that we need to leave such choices as who we're going to kill um, up to the women well, and doctors. Well, Whitley, first of all, as a Catholic, you don't know about my faith. I've been a Catholic all my life, a cradle Catholic. I, You can be pro-choice and be pro-life. That shows you how little you know about the Catholic faith. Number one, you can be a pro-life person and be pro-choice. As a Catholic, if it was left with me, we would have fish today. You'd be eating fish for dinner. So let me just tell you, you can be pro-life and pro-choice. So you need to learn more about that issue. Okay. Obviously, you don't. L let's not go personal here. Brian, do you think that Indiana lawmakers will try <laughs> no, to pass the same kind of bill? Um, I hope not. I think Indiana should be able to handle these, this issue and, and not try to follow what Texas does. Texas does a lot of crazy things, including um, passing gun laws, a lot of people to carry guns and not have to have a gun permit. So Texas is not a state that we, that Indiana should follow. We 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 follow common sense here in Indiana, with you know, regardless of what your politics are. So I would hope Indiana would not follow Texas. Wait, Definitely wait. not. I mean, he's against constitutional carry as well. Come on, that's our Second Amendment rights, and we know that I our support the Second are, Amendment, but I support uh, Americans having. Um, so. But we're Americans not going to agree on this. We're not going to agree on this issue. Permit. I've never heard of a pro-choice, pro-life uh, Catholic, uh, but that's something new. I guess I'll Google that a little later. Okay, but Willie, do you, uh, you, do you foresee us? Okay, well, hold know. on, guys. Hold on. <laughs> Whitley, do you foresee a similar piece of legislation passing here in Indiana as we're seeing Absolutely. out in Texas? Because Indiana is a pro-life state, we have a Republican supermajority, and they are keen on protecting the lives of the innocent. So I don't understand why this isn't something that we wouldn't do. I don't, I don't see why, would, why we wouldn't pursue this issue at all. Okay, we'll see what happens. I want to move on to Afghanistan. President Biden this week defending his plan uh, to pull the troops out of Afghanistan. Now, new poll numbers show that his disapproval rating around the country is, is growing. Brian, is this just a blip or a long-term concern for Democrats? It's just a blip, and the problem with a lot of Republicans, a lot of them are chicken hawks and keyboard warriors. A lot of them have never served in the military. As someone who has a father who has served in the military and served in a combat zone, I can tell you war is tough. War is never easy. Um, too many Republicans um, just think war is a game. This is a serious issue, and extricating ourselves from, from Afghanistan was never going to be easy. But the fact is, um, it's just a tough issue. And what we're supposed to do, stay there another 20 years? 1% um, of, uh, of our country serves in the military. And we've got people, uh, a lot of them are on talk radio, a lot of them, like I said, keyboard warriors, chicken hawks types, never right. served in the military, don't even have any close family members that served in the military, but yet they want All us right. to keep fighting in Afghanistan. We're running so out of time, really so Willie, I want to get your thoughts on this. The polls are exactly how the American people feel. He lied to us about the Afghanistan situation. He said he was so surprised while the Taliban took over so quickly when we find out that he had this information ahead of time. He lied and said he was going to stay and get all of our citizens out, even if that meant staying past the date and he left Americans there. This is his approval ratings are a representation of what this administration has done to America in only six months. This was the honeymoon period, but the honeymoon is now over, and we're starting to feel the effects of not only his failed foreign policy, but also what's happening with our jobs report as it has just been announced and been released. Unemployment is once again up again. So the economy, trash, foreign policy from the Biden administration, also trash. I don't know well, about that's chicken definitely pox. not true at all. In fact, but, the largest airlift in American history. We got over well over 100,000 Afghan allies and Americans out. All right. um, our military we we're, did a very we're, good we're job. We're running out of time. Obviously, we're going to leave it there. We're going to let you guys take this conversation off air on social media. We'll be watching. Brian, Whitley, always good to see you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Happy Labor Day. Take all Indiana politics on the go with you. Download our podcast now. Part of the All Indiana Podcast Network and allindianapodcastnetwork.com.